Alright guys, I've got some Sonic trivia questions for you. Uh, Alright, so first one's an easy one. What's the first Sega game to feature Sonic the Hedgehog? Radmobile. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's Radmobile. Red mobile. I'm sorry. I, I mean, it could Red be mobile, mobile, mobile. mobile. It, it's it's a thing that's over a, a baby's crib, right? You like up oh, yeah. that mobile is rad, and that baby will be rad. Okay. <laughs> All right, you got it. Well done. Well done. Okay, what's the first Sonic game to feature Sonic Mighty Ant Ray? Sega Sonic the Arcade. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, it, it's called Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. Arcade is not in the title. Okay, sorry, I'm Ray. sorry. You're right. <laughs> I, you're I, right. I'm out. Ju judges accept all all of the above. Okay. Now here's here's the tricky one. What's the uh -huh. second Sonic game to feature Sonic Mighty and Ray? Uh oh. It's not Sonic Mania Plus. Oh, I'm sorry. The judges say no. David, do you want to right. steal? Oh, I should I steal? It's because you told me this before, which is why I know the answer. Because I wouldn't, it wouldn't have occurred to me. But yes, the the correct answer is once again. Rad Mobile or Mobile for the Sega Saturn. Uh, That's right. Known as Gale Racer in the port. Uh, um, all right. So final question. Uh, what what are the Sonic games on the Saturn that feature Sonic and Flicky? Sonic 3D Blast Flicky's Island. All right. One. All right, that is that's a good one. Uh, Sonic R. Sonic Jam. Yeah. Both. Well, yeah. So all all three main Sonic games. There's one more. Fighters Megamix. <laughs> Good oh, guess. Right. But no, Sonic isn't in that game. Bean and Bark are. Well, we don't know. Bo, what is it? Last, okay. Well, Trick is in all of these questions. Gale Racer, once again, or uh, <laughs> Radmobile. So uh, this oh. this bit about uh, Flicky is brand new. I was just, you know, trawling through the Gale Racer source code, as you do. And what do you know? I found Flicky hiding in there if you put in a button code. Hold A, B, and start as the race starts, and uh, Flicky comes right up. So nobody knew this for uh, 29 years, and uh, now we know. So update your trivia books, and uh, let's start the show. Live from Podcatcher of Choice, it's Sonic Weekly. We're back, baby. We're back. As you might have surmised, this is a show about Sonic the Hedgehog that releases once every seven days or so. Very happy to have you back on the show with us, on the show, in the show, with the show. You're listening to the show. We're talking with you. It's a conversation. You can comment. You can send us an email. My name is Grant. I wasn't here last week, but uh, what a great episode it was. It was hosted by Bo, who's with hey. us here. Hi, Bo. Welcome, Get Played listeners. I'm glad you guys got to see a weird episode where Grant wasn't on it after you heard him on Get Played. Uh, we're, we're back to normal here. Yes. Welcome to uh, any new listeners, and uh, welcome to the star of our show, David the Lurker. Hi, David. Oh, hi, Grant. Hi, Bo. Yes, yes. I I'm assuming people must have been super confused. Yes. Oh, and, and welcome back, Grant, because, right, you weren't here because you were there you were getting played uh I, I listened to it i listened to the episode before we started recording i was just finishing it up uh and uh yeah you know what it would it be bold to say grant that you were the best part of the episode oh <laughs> <laughs> you know what i thought was the best part of the episode is at the beginning where they're doing a little skit about yeah. all right which sonic character would you cut it's like okay honey the cat and they're like no no i can't cut honey and they're like okay okay fine right. Beam the dynamite you know that went on like seven beats too long and i thought <laughs> it was great the entire time i could have listened yeah. to another 10 minutes of it i was uh, dying laughing to it i they recorded that i think after i had left uh right it, it was so so funny uh to listen to and it, yeah it's one of my favorite yes yeah, so so it is very strange like a... oh i was gonna say it's very strange to hear somebody say nicole the holo link uh, hollow links <laughs> aloud because i'm like i don't even know sonic fans who say that whole thing aloud there was actually one character that they mentioned in that get played cold open that i was that i didn't immediately know which was oh. gold the tenrec or tenerac yeah who's that... who's, who's that I, I believe that's a character from the post reboot Archie because Surge is a is a Tenrec, Tenrec, right. however you say it. Ten, but Gold, sure. it it is. Um, I feel like 
uh, as is the case with most of the new characters that were introduced in post reboot Archie, um, they get a couple issues and then sort of vanish because they, they didn't have enough time. They they were introducing things all over the place. Okay, take a take a moment to acquaint yourself with Gold the Tenrec. Let me uh, also tell the listener. Uh, just a little highlight reel of where we're going in this episode. A lot of lots to talk about. We're going to talk about the IHOP stuff. We're going to talk mm-hmm. about Fearless Year of Shadow debuting last week. You guys were wondering on the show of like, is this is this the Year of Shadow? Where and then just a couple of days later, boom, Year of Shadow debuts, rolls out with a couple new spots, I guess you would call them. And we are going to talk about uh, one of the uh, Dark Horse fan favorites in the series, uh, Sonic and the Black Knight. We're going to talk about it with our guest, who is also uh, the YouTube czar of Sonic Weekly, and that's Jack of Old Games. Hi, Jack. Hey, you guys said I wouldn't be back, but I'm back. Did we not? Did we say you wouldn't be back? You weren't here for that. I think uh, at the end of one of these episodes, I was like, oh, yeah, maybe he'll come back one day. But after this one, I don't know. <laughs> I, I kept the faith. I, I thought he would be back. Let's talk about... Okay, so you guys talked about IHOP a bit last week. IHOP mm-hmm. has been talked about anywhere there's been conversation about Breakfast or Sonic the Hedgehog. And as usual, though we're on a weekly cadence, we're somehow always a little late or a little early when we're recording to like the news. So it's like everybody's already covered IHOP with thick coats of syrupy <laughs> tapes. <laughs> So I don't know what else we can say about it, but I will say that I did go with Ashlyn, my wife, to in IHOP, and I ordered the uh, Blue Blur Blueberry Pancakes. And when I was ordering it, I said to the waitress, the waitress said, hi, what would you like? And I said, I would like to order the Blueberry Blue, the Blueberry Blue. And she was like, yeah, the Blueberry Pancakes. She was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. But the Blue Blur, <laughs> the Blue Blur Blame Blurry Blame, the Blue Blur Blame Blurry. I have a podcast. Blue blur, blueberry, blue, blueberry, blueberry, blue blur, blur pancakes. Mm-hmm. And uh, she, she was, you know, she was tapping her foot and tapping her watch. I think by the end she was laying on the ground and like, <laughs> I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> she, did you get a? Uh, I'm waiting from her. <laughs> I'm waiting. Uh, but yeah, the pancakes came uh as promised and uh ashton got the shadow chaos control chocolate chip pancakes and uh what did you uh guys order when you went jack i know you went recently what what was your order for the sound from the sonic ihop menu i found myself on a road trip to vegas recently and that was the uh the stopping point of choice my partner was like we gotta go to ihop like cool, I'm going to do the most cursed thing possible. And went in there and ordered the shadow stack. I didn't know about the uh, half-off onion rings if you go Sonic style. Uh, you got to ask for it. They're not going to offer it. That's how they get you. That's true. They lose money on every onion ring uh, sold, I guess. Oh, that's... Then I definitely want to order more. Yeah. Get more, uh, you can get more of the Amy skin to sell on eBay or something. Yes, so the uh incentive for going to IHOP is you get the pan coins to unlock the retro diner IHOP Amy DLC costume in Sonic Superstars, uh, which we have in overabundance of because Smoothies, uh, our editor and uh, our, our fourth what do you call it, pillar, fourth pillar of Sonic Weekly. Uh, out of, let's say, five pillars, let's say six pillars, including you, the listener. Uh, Let's say seven pillars, because there's seven Chaos Emeralds. Your mom could be involved. Uh, Anyway, the point is, is that Amy's got a costume, and we've got extra pan coins, and so if you would like the pan coins, if you can't, particularly if you don't live in the United States, because the United States and I think Canada, maybe Canada, I actually don't know about Canada, I haven't verified Canada, but anyway, it's not available everywhere. So if you would like the costume, email sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. And we'll give you as many as we got. We have a few extras. And uh, and yeah, there you go. All you have to do is email and say, hey, I listened about 10 minutes into the episode. Were the pan coins a pre-existing thing or are they introducing the pan coins for this Sonic promotion? That lore is new, I think. 
I saw okay. I thought the pan coins were pre-established because on the episode of Get Play that I listened to, one of the hosts was like, "Oh, I lost all my pan coins from March," implying that uh, they already existed. You're right. There's a whole app. What am I talking about? Right. There's a there's a whole economy. There is um, a. Uh, at what point in your life do you sit there and go, "Oh wait, before I order at IHOP, let me open up the iPod." I hop app so that I can yeah. get my pan coins. I assume this is just a whole world because like I got a guy I went to college with who's just like on every rewards game. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm getting 3% off my gum with my Trident app. I'm like, <laughs> what? You know, that's, that's, that's money that could go to your kid's college fund. And it's right. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, the airlines, they don't know what's going to hit them when I redeem all these, these miles. <laughs> They got 150 million. Uh, all right, I'm, I, I looked it up. IHOP Rewards, International Bank of Pancakes. The YouTube video introducing it was uploaded March 14th, 2022. So okay. we've we've had at least two years worth of pan coins, assuming that this is the actual start of them all. Um, on the and you can play them on the stack market, which is that's a, right. A, yeah, that's what? it. That's what I'm saying. And then you can also get uh, uh, like Sonic Frontiers and Sonic Superstars. You can get the games uh, themselves if you get something like you basically have to spend two hundred dollars. But, you know, but it's like if you have like a kid's birthday party or something Mm -hmm. and you're paying, then you get it's like, hey, you also get a free, you know, not free, but you get the additional gift of Sonic Frontiers. And then what what a happy birthday that might be for this theoretical hypothetical uh heartwarming story uh Bo, david <laughs> uh, did you guys go to ihop uh have you been to ihop anytime recently uh no we haven't gone to ihop yet uh we should i i was like oh i have no idea if there's any ihops near here and I never even bothered to look it up until this very moment and it's like oh yeah there's one 10 minutes away so <laughs> you know what maybe this yeah. week we will okay. continue because we've been talking about IHOP. We talked about it last week, this week. Yep. We may as That's well continue right. it. Make it. A, we'll call this the month of IHOP, the month of Pancoin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like if if there's a year of something, each month should have a theme. And since mm, sure. there's a certain character who has a certain year, there this is their month who? about their pan. What? Oh, who do you mean? <laughs> oh, well, you, you know, like there's this character. He's like the coolest i don't know if you're familiar sonic oh well sonic used to be the coolest until 2001 cool right he was way past cool but this character how about the ultimate life form yeah that's right bio lizard the bio (laughs) not the prototype not the prototype oh Oh, shit right it's yes the year of shadow right it's fearless colon fearless colon year, underline year of shadow i don't even know if there's a colon it doesn't look like there actually is a colon i'll pretend there is there. an underline though it's yeah underline. there is an underline yes fearless yeah. year of shadow this was uh, announced a couple days ago Ooh, yeah uh, sonic stadium says sega has launched a brand new fan celebration campaign to honor in honor of shadow the hedgehog aimed at celebrating what it means to be fearless and embracing your inner shadow um right because last year sega uh had the fast friends forever promotion which was just focusing on the the core four sonic tail shadow knuckles and amy not shadow shadow was left out uh, and they've given him his own year we should read what it means and tell me what this feels like to you in your heart and soul and this includes jack who is sitting here because i know he you 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 do have shadow inside your heart right we all do. <laughs> in 2024, we're bringing Shadow into the light with a new fan celebration campaign, Fearless, colon. Oh, there's a colon in the in this part, Year of Shadow. While we ran with our successful Fast Friends Forever program last year, our new annual campaign this year celebrates what it means to be fearless and embracing your inner shadow. In all caps, break barriers, be unafraid, be at your best, and do it all with a powerful confidence. But don't just take it from us. Witness it from the ultimate life form himself. Um, yeah. So I guess I, I, these are. Yeah. Oh, go I, on. I got a lot of thoughts here. So number one, okay. I like how they're 
like marketing the campaign to us as a campaign it's like we're kind of like getting a look into like a marketing <laughs> trade magazine oh, is this a leaked pdf that we're this is, uh, all no, this is right? like like you know video game advertisers monthly has an interview with you know sega marketing and they're like we're really excited about this new campaign so that's my first thought second thought is i like how there's a four in the list because you you know if i'm making a list mm-hmm. i'm not a pro i'm gonna do three i'm gonna do you know fast friends <laughs> forever right but they're like right. no mm-hmm. we've got four principles and um do i have a third one no i'm gonna zag and i'm gonna go two two thoughts two thoughts <laughs> right it was also accompanied with a, a video uh featuring um some girl moving into the suburbs and being sad until shadow tells her to stop it don't be sad and she's like yeah okay i'll bike cool and make friends uh how does shadow appear to her in this video I guess she's having a break from reality, right? Isn't that how it goes? Where uh, the drawing, the drawing from her notebook comes yeah. to life, comes, to- and she realizes she needs to be fearless. Yeah, and and that's right. He Shadow tells her what to do. So Shadow, uh, I saw a tweet where it's like this is what every Shadow uh, fan does. Probably they just imagine Shadow telling them how to fix their life. And I mean, Hey, if it works, I imagine it not? would probably work. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if the advice shadow would give would be, be fearless though. I would yeah, think it would shadow like... as a self empowerment tool is a, uh, interesting take. <laughs> yeah. I could see authentic, right. You're mm-hmm. the fake hedgehog. Right. That's number one. And the I amnesic. could also see, right. Amnesic, like forgive and forget. That's good advice from Shadow. And also run away. Like, just chaos control yourself out of this bad situation. Right. It works every time. I, I I was looking at it, and I was a little confused, because I feel like a lot of these could just apply to Sonic, the, the big bold caps. Like, be unafraid. Who's unafraid? Oh, it's Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, be at your best. Who tells you to be at your best? It's Sonic the Hedgehog. Powerful confidence? I feel like that's what Sonic would tell you. Break barriers? I mean, maybe me. I mean, he rolls into a ball. He did that in Green Hill Zone. Uh, you know, the fearless thing, though, is mm-hmm. a Taylor Swift thing. That's oh, a yeah. that's a that's a name of a song or an album. One of the two. And I think both. it's an album. It could be both. And right. I think it released the Taylor's version of it on in April, whatever day this came out. Oh, like, it was the same day. They're like. We're going to get some of the Google traffic out of that. Like a Taylor fan is oh. going to be like, hey, hey, what's this shadow? Well, I don't know. I can't decide if it's just a, a cosmic coincidence or if like maybe there is, are, you know, diehard Swifties. Um, oh, wow. Working yeah. on the uh, on Taylor's, the campaign. Yeah, uh, somewhere somewhere out there. Out 2021. Right. April 9th. Wow. That's. Who knew? I didn't. I didn't know that it was the same day. That um, maybe Taylor Swift bought Sega. Maybe have we not had this conversation? Has Taylor Swift played Sonic? Whoa, that's a good question. Probably right. Probably well, she's she's in the uh, right. She she's in her early she's born nineteen eighty nine. So, eighty nine. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the name of the album. I'm like, I know she. It was then. So <laughs> Sonic would have been in her wheelhouse right as a child Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's let's look up taylor swift sonic the hedgehog and uh, see what i'm gonna bet that she has played uh a sonic advance a sonic rush perhaps you think the mobiles like you're on tour and you gotta i think so hours on the bus but you know i also think that it's possible that maybe she was playing wii games and she may have even played Sonic and the Secret Rings and Sonic and the Black Knight and Sonic Colors. She might have had a Wii on that bus. Okay. Uh, when you look that up, you get some weird AI art of, of Sonic the Hedgehog and, and oh, Taylor God. Swift. Um, I, mean, I can't believe you didn't just discover every AMV of Shadow and Taylor, <laughs> Taylor Swift music. Oh, right, because Shadow, this was this is also something I had forgotten about. It, it's, it was established during the Sonic Twitter takeover in 2022. 
that Shadow the Hedgehog is a Swifty. He enjoys right. Taylor Swift. So it makes sense that he would want to align his campaign with the mm-hmm. release date of, of, a, of, Taylor, of a Taylor Swift album, yeah. especially one where it's Fearless Taylor's version. version. She's taking back her material, you know, because mm-hmm. she couldn't get control of the master tapes. And she's like, well, then I'm going to re-record it because I have control of the actual songs themselves. Mm-hmm. So she was being fearless right yeah so if we, if we yeah. look at the four point she breaking barriers she, yeah. huge, she she's a huge pop star unafraid like she's not worried about what people have to say to her she's gonna keep singing she's a tortured poet her new album's coming soon be at your best <laughs> i mean she's at the top of her game right yeah. the eras tour yeah. smashing yeah. records do yeah. it all with a powerful confidence i would say it would be hard it's to the argue year of taylor swift it's the year of <laughs> <laughs> this this year finally is the year of Taylor Swift. Her. I think. Okay, yeah. I under I finally Shadow, understand the campaign. Shadow likes Shadow likes Taylor Swift. What Sonic like Rihanna and Tails likes Olivia Rodrigo. And wait, what do we think? Yeah, that all kind of works. Uh, okay. Well, who does Amy like? Oh, it, that's in Murder of the Sonic that Dog. Doesn't Shadow buy her oh, yeah. concert that, tickets for? Is that B? Yeah, a B band that I can't even think of the the mm-hmm. name of, but yes, she does have an in universe. Yeah, who does? Yeah, who does Amy Rose listen I, to? Who would she stand? Is what I I could see her being very into Britney Spears. Uh, right, early to Amy definitely the right age to have, you know, in terms of when she was created in the universe. Yes, Sonic like, Adventure. Amy Rose is definitely listening to Britney Spears all day, every day. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, who else is big? Uh, wait. Uh, what, what's what's her face? Billy Billy Eilish. Billy Eilish. There you B- go. Right. I mean, she uh, she's yeah. she's got two Oscars. I'm sure Amy was a fan of of the Barbie movie. And uh, what was what I about made? Knuckles? Knuckles is into uh, yeah, I don't great. Know. Probably Beyonce. Beyonce. Cat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I could, I could. A see big, that. The, big the cats into Doja Cat. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> no relation, but no relation. Yeah. Right. But but the... Just fellow. Right. Yeah. Fearless Egg... felines. Yeah. Eggman is listening to. Uh, what do you think? Eggman likes Kesha. Oh. Oh. Okay. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. TikTok, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna give yeah. myself a promotion. Wow, I don't, promotion. I don't, I don't don't connect at all, but you know, right. every time I think about the promotion line, I laugh. Sonic the Hedgehog, Shadow the Hedgehog, and you know who else is having a big year, but more quietly or just maybe off to the side, I guess, is Knuckles, because this is the anniversary year of Sonic Three and Knuckles. Yeah, of both Sonic Three and Sonic and Knuckles, and Knuckles in Sonic Two and Blue Spheres. And there's going to be the new Paramount series, which debuts pretty soon. I think by the next time. No, we've got. Yeah, not next week, but the right because it's the 20 something. 26. 26. That's right. 26. Okay. So. Right. So, yeah, we'll be a little late to it. We will. Um, Of course. That's how it goes. Yeah. (laughs) Well, no, we we already established we're going to talk about one episode per week. That totally works for me. Just just talk about every scene featuring Wade. And only Wade. Yeah. We're going to oh. get deep into the Wade lore. We're going right. to wade into the Wade depths. We we are going... That'll be lo- the name of the segment. Wade into the depths. <laughs> oh, wow. I think we should do the Wade cut of the Knuckles show, right? Where it's only the Wade scene. So anything else... Uh, well, like Garfield without Garfield, but yeah. for Wade. Yeah. So, yeah. I well, I mean, Knuckles will be with Wade. So we'll see a little of Knuckles. But we should just do the Wade stuff. So you could present it as a no. Wade's hallucination. That's what I was thinking. Like Garfield without Garfield is like a really dark look at right. the Garfield series. And then yeah. this could be the same. So it's just yeah. Wade who's imagined the previous two movies. And he's like, oh, remember Dr. Robotnik attacked the city? And it's like, who's Dr. Robotnik? Mm. It's like, yeah, Tom, you got the, that hedgehog living in your attic. He's like, how uh, did you guys get from Hawaii back to Green Hill? It doesn't make any sense at all. And like, what are you talking about? So we took a plane. What do you think? <laughs> you, know, you know what... Uh, we are on the right time to uh, record and be timely is the uh, the CinemaCon 
Oh, um, yeah. A little bit of news on Sonic Movie 3. No spoilers. I don't think these are spoilers. Eh, these, eh, if you're listening, these are not spoilers. I've, I've, I, they're, eh. uh, I mean, if you want to fast forward a couple minutes... Right, like if you if you don't want to know anything about the Sonic Three movie, if you don't want to know anything. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Right, basically, it's a trailer. Like I'm sure that the official trailer will be similar, um, but yeah, this one is only for CinemaCon attendees. I, I watched a video of a couple guys being like, "I like Sonic," and they also talked about. I, I don't remember if we mentioned it or if this interview was after the last time we recorded. One of the producers was like, oh, I want to turn the Sonic movies into an Avengers-style franchise, right? Like, right. the that movies was, uh, are the, the big events. A the main characters. producer, uh, yeah. Toby... Uh, is it Asher? Sure. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. I I, 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 I'm pretty sure it's Toby Asher. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Toby Asher is the producer who is talking about making the Sonic movies Avengers-level, you know, connections... Um, I think that that is all implying that movie three is not going to have Amy or Rouge. I think people need to like possibly, even though I think we, we all want that, but I think the, like we've talked about before, the movie's just probably going to not have room for all of these additional characters. Plus the characters existing from the first two movies, not to mention whoever might be connecting from the knuckle series. That's not to say I, I do think if we're going to get Rouge the bat, it's probably a surprise in the Knuckles series. Uh, otherwise, I think it's more like probably a down the line kind of thing. Uh, for CinemaCon, they were saying that uh, Shadow's in the movie. Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles are fighting Shadow. Apparently, Shadow's motorcycle and the Fearless website also makes a point of uh, bringing some attention to Dark Rider, which apparently is now part of the Shadow lore. Uh, which makes it, and in fact, they clarify that it wasn't called Dark Rider until Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing. So canonically, canonically, Shenmue is part of the Sonic universe. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all are gonna, y'all are gonna sit down here and listen to my two hour TED talk about Shenmue. <laughs> I, I, I am in rapt attention. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. All right, so it all started on the Sega Saturn, Bo's favorite system. True. Yeah. How long Virtual do we want this RPG. to actually go on? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a fun tale. I mean, it, you know. Right. Do we think there are any builds? Did they make Saturn discs that somebody could potentially like drop and I think be, pick up? There appears to be based on the footage that's out there, those are definitely running at Saturn frame rates. I think that was captured on an actual Saturn. I think yeah. there's a disc somewhere. I want that somewhere right. in mm. somewhere in one of you Suzuki's underlings basements. There's a disc at high risk of rot. <laughs> they should, they should preserve it. I guess if, if Shamu was in a better place, uh, waiting for Shamu four, waiting for Shamu five, uh, mm. up through 16. Right. Well, there's 16 chapters, but not each game is is one chapter, right? Like the first game is one chapter. The second chapter occurs in a comic book. That's the most frustrating damn thing. It it is. No, it's, it's like, not the no, it's not the most frustrating thing. The, the most frustrating <laughs> thing is the third game doesn't advance the story <laughs> at all. <laughs> that is pretty legendary. Do you do you want to know how much money I gave to that fucking Kickstarter? Wow. How, how much? Tell us. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. We'll make a Price is Right game out of it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think 240. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go uh, I'm going to go 241. Whoa, I'm going to say <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, but I'll say 300. I will go higher. Oh, 300. Okay, I'm going to say 275. I'll go in between. Grant is the winner. I gave five hundred and fifty dollars to that damn Kickstarter. You gave five hundred and fifty dollars to you, Suzuki? Like, I really loved Shenmue. What What did uh, you get out of that five hundred and fifty? What were the um, the bonuses? Uh, I got the fancy, nice version of the game for PS4. Mm -hmm. I got a uh, 
I saved Shinmu t-shirt. Um, I, bet that's I got cool. a bunch of capsule toys in a fake little capsule <sighs> toy box thing. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, that's and cool. I got a signed poster of uh, Ren. Oh, hmm. damn. Nice. Yeah, wow. That's a lot. Um, Actually, Shinmu was like the first game in my game hacking career. So I had to import it. And then I had to learn how to hex edit the save from the US version of Shinmu the first. So I could carry over my items to Shinmu the second. And then immediately have them get stolen in the game because it doesn't let you like start off in too good of a position. Well, then what's the point of carrying them over if they got all stolen? <laughs> I, so if you really want to game it, you can like sell all your capsule toys for lighters, and then the, the the kid doesn't steal your lighters, and then you sell them all back afterward, and then you can okay. start out with some extra money. It's it's kind of not worth it, though. It takes like 20 minutes to... like. You don't it. need a lot of money no. in Shinmu 2 to get by. You need to go like work at the docks for like, one shift every two days, and you're fine. <laughs> Now, the, the lesson from Shinmu 2 is that gambling is awesome and you can't lose, kids. <laughs> would you like to play a game of Lucky Hit? Yes, I would. Welcome back to Sonic Weekly. Uh, oh, yeah. We the- talk about Sonic the Hedgehog once every seven days or so. What were we talking about before we went off on the show? Uh, the, we the Sonic 3 movie. Sonic 3 Cinemacon. I, I, right, okay, I guess so Shadow's in the movie. Shadow. Dark Rider is the motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sonic and Sega All Stars. Shenmue is canon. Yes. Uh, now, Cinemacon. Okay, David, I know you got. Can I just. Let me just get. Yeah, give yeah. You this and, then, and then you take it. But uh, Cinemacon, the Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles are fighting shadow uh-huh. the three of them combined are not equal or better than shadow apparently and to me this is the major thing i think we get eggman in the suit i think we get a game accurate round eggman we know that jim carrey has been wanting to wear the suit for at least a full movie like we know that he wanted to do it for movie two Maybe even far as far back as movie one. I don't really remember when he started bringing it up in interviews, but I I kind of like the idea that he's like becoming Eggman more every movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty fun. Uh, it's a pretty fun arc, I guess, uh, a space colony arc. Um, so that <laughs> oh. is the. That's the, you know, no, I haven't seen. I don't think there's any leaked footage of it. Just that very short description. Yeah, I was looking for leaked footage. I was I was uh, scrolling through YouTube. There's a lot of fake, fake uh, a lot of fake footage. Like, oh, here's that. Remember the end of Sonic Two? I'm like, yeah, I remember the end of Sonic Two. I remember Shadow. Oh yeah, you you used Adobe and and made Kristen Ritter's name appear. Thanks. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I think I'm excited about Fat Suit Eggman. That that is. That that is the most exciting thing to me at the moment. Um, there, there's also a description where, uh, right, we don't apparently we don't hear Shadow at all in the trailer, so we don't know who's voicing the character. So rumors can still speculated. You can still speculation. What am I trying to say? You can still the speculation Speculate. can uh, continue to abound. Is what I was trying to say to some way. And in in fact. Can we do that for a second? Oh yeah. Uh, let, let's steal this from Twitter. There was a there was a good one that was like, okay, pitch your shadow voice actor, mm-hmm. but you can't use any of the ones that have been like popularly fan cast. So no Keanu, no Hayden Christensen, no Robert Pattinson. Um, you know, I I don't know. Like uh, I think those are the major ones. Um, yeah. Okay. Can you think of somebody who could? do a good shadow off the top of your head. Um, I'll give you a couple. I would have said Kid Cudi, but he's going to be in the Knuckles show. So So you can't say Kid Cudi. I can't say Kid Cudi. Because he is going to be in the Knuckles show. He's in the show. A couple of um, options. Will Arnett, Brian Cranston, um, Michael Keaton, Oh man, 
very both, older chat. Yeah, both of those, uh, Brian Cranston and Michael Keaton, I would be 110% in for either of them being Shadow. I'll say yeah. that right now. Because uh, he is an old yeah. man. You know, it, like if you yeah, like, he is old. He comes from a distant time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he he might have a, I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm just saying names. But Jack, what do you think? Who would you... And going off what you were saying, I kind of like uh, Aaron Paul for it, I think. Uh, he plays his voice up a lot, but he has a great down voice for this sort of thing. Down voice. Love them at Coachella. Down voice. They wouldn't play Coachella. They would be at uh, the Warp Tour. Uh, uh, um, Taylor Swift, I think. Taylor Swift Shadow. playing Shadow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she could do it. She, I mean... What can't what can't she do? I've seen uh, the Eras Tour movie on Disney Plus. Right. She, I guess yeah. she should be in more films, right? She was in Cats. Uh huh. Wasn't she a in cinematography Am- masterpiece? Uh, um, Bo. Okay, it can't be Kid Cudi. Can't be Kid Cudi. <sighs> Michael B. Jordan. Does he do any voice work? Be good. Sure, Michael B. Jordan. Uh, he does. Yeah. Uh, he was on the. Uh, Genlock show that Rooster Teeth was doing, I think, before they closed shop. I don't know if he was any good or not. I never watched it. I could see Christian Bale be Shadow, right? If we're going through the Batmans, like sure. Um, yeah, oh, Clooney. Clooney uh, could be Shadow, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe not Clooney. <laughs> okay, well, that was boring. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay what about an a- actors who are no longer with us like a vintage actor who do you think would have been a great shadow <laughs> uh, uh orson wells <laughs> <laughs> okay uh what about burt reynolds would do you think burt sure. reynolds would have been a <laughs> oh, would have been a great shadow in Jimmy the Stewart, christopher lee yeah oh yeah wow, we, were, we were we were all on top of that one naming living <laughs> actors we were like fucking uh, uh sh- shit taylor swift uh okay. <laughs> yeah, jimmy stewart is Oh, yeah, James yeah. Stewart. Oh, I can't do it. Like, not, now, Maria. Maria. You got oh, shot in the back. <laughs> this is what you wanted. Uh, you, you wanted you wanted this, Maria. Yeah, you wanted uh, revenge. Here we go. This, let's get James Stewart on <laughs> Well, you're, you're, you're nothing but a faker. Yeah, that's all you are. You're a fake hedgehog. I'll show you who the fake hedgehog is. Um, okay. I'm on board. Sonic and the Black Knight <laughs> came out in 2009 for the Wii. It was part of the games that have the Sonic the Hedgehog series that came out on the Wii, which include Sonic Colors, Sonic and the Secret Rings, Sonic and the Black Knight. It was in between those two, right? It was the sequel to Sonic and the Secret Rings, which had you controlling using the Wiimote on its side and you tilted forward and backwards to control yourself. Sonic and the Black Knight is different. You use the nunchuck to control with the stick and you have a sword, ca- uh, Caliburn, right? Is that it? Caliburn? Caliburn yeah. is correct, but okay, there's, thank a, you. Uh, there's a name there's... change in the late game. Oh, <laughs> yes. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the, the whole... We'll, we'll, we're getting into Sonic and the Black Knight is the point. Uh, and uh, the reason that I bring it up as well while we're talking about the week's events is... Uh, there was also that interview with Azuka-san where he was talking about many things uh, with the Sonic series and s- his role at Sega, how he began, in fact, during Sonic 2, and then Sonic 3 was his first real project. Uh, and then uh, that period, which kind of includes the development, I think it does include the development of Sonic and the Black Knight, uh, where there was it was between Naka and Azuka in terms of who was leading Sonic Team. Naka leaves in 2006. Uh, sometime a bit later in 2007 uh, or so is when Azuka takes over. But there is a period of time where some projects are going through and they're much more led by the individual producer or director. So you get very different views of Sonic between Sonic 06, Sonic and the Secret Rings, Black Knight, Colors, Unleashed, and Unleashed on Wii. Uh 
so a lot of different versions of Sonic in that short period of time, all ostensibly doing the same thing. Um, so Sonic and the Black Knight, I just watched Jack complete the game last night on Twitch. Um, and there's a lot to talk about with this game. Definitely curious to hear about the experiences of everybody with it. Uh, but Jack wanted to toss it to you for uh, just kind of thoughts on the playthrough of this. You had come on the show before to defend Secret Rings, saying that Secret Rings is not as bad as it generally is uh, reputed to be. Uh, how did you feel about Black Knight? Black Knight was a mixed bag to me. So I think they wanted to learn. They try. They they did the thing that you they always do with Sonic games, where they go, okay, what lessons should we take from the last game, and how should we change it for the better? And they hear the right thing and do the wrong thing with it. <laughs> yes. So everybody hated the motion controls. I've already been on here defending those motion controls in the past. So they changed it to you run forward with the nunchuck and you slash your sword with the Wiimote. But that the motion controls are very important with that slashing, but it is coming from the school of 2006, the Wii just came out, boy isn't waggle fun. So you're sitting there, you, dear listener, can't see this, but I'm just shaking my hand vigorously, and that's that's 90% of the controls of this game, and it's this is horrible of, and imprecise. When people criticize the Wii for waggle, this game is is waggle. Like, there's not a lot of precision to it. It really is just, like, shake weight. Um, <laughs> just sort of, like, just, just, yeah, just that waving motion, that waggling motion. Um because it doesn't matter like if you thrust forward, right? You can like, go you in you any do. direction you want, just as long as it is at the correct time, which good luck. There's kind of a glowing indicator when you need to do it. And I hope you figured out your screen's input delay, because otherwise you're screwed. Because you can slash not just bad guys, you can also hurt innocent townspeople as a feature <laughs> in this game. Yeah, as Sonic says in this game, I don't mind playing the bad guy every now and then. Oh, yeah. Harmed yeah. townsperson. I saw quite a bit coming up on the screen while uh, Ashlyn was playing it. Uh, I have to confess that a lot of the playthrough that on my end of it was watching Ashlyn play. I played some of it too, uh, but she was even less precise because she was just like, Again, it's like you can't see this, dear listener, but it was just like waggle, 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 and she's just got more, and I'm just not, but she'll do, and uh, but she has no, she doesn't pause, I guess is what I'm saying. She just waggle, waggle, waggles, and always that guy's cut, cutting. Always, she's always be cutting, A B C, and sometimes innocent people get mowed down, and a lot of harm, harmed town person. Well, that's just screen. how it was in the Middle Ages, right? Like you just wandered the countryside, waving. Yeah, this game around. is nonfiction. This is the one game <laughs> in the Sonic series that really happened. <laughs> uh, I, I don't have a whole lot of history with this game. I, you know, I've read about it. I've listened to the music, and I, it's a weird path we almost went down, right? So, like this, can you imagine if the storybook series was? Like super successful, right? What what have they had done next? Okay, so we did Arabian Nights, we did mm -hmm. the uh, Arthur's Kingdom. Yeah, you know what? What legendary? Like, are we going to get Norse gods? Sonic, you could like do Sonic. Norse. You could like do they had pirates as it was like Treasure Island was going to be the third one, right? Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, Treasure Island. That's a good choice uh, i was gonna say old testament maybe they would have done that oh, i want to play <laughs> i want to play old testament sonic <laughs> finally but, sonic genesis oh yeah uh, so Whoa, the second thing the is beginning there's nothing here but, <laughs> the beginning is the word the word is awesome <laughs> who said uh, that let there be what i should have put this together but you know who is the lead game designer for black knight our buddy Kishimoto. It's Kishimoto, and you know the the storybook uh, DNA is not really present in these later games, but you know Kishimoto reigns supreme. He wins in the end. 
He stuck around while everyone else went to Nintendo or something. Uh, yeah, or wherever it was. They they all left. Like the Generations director left. The Unleashed director left. They went to greener or less blue pastures, I guess you could say. Greener hills. Greener. <laughs> right. You and see, yeah. if you wanted to apply like a Kishimoto auteur lens to it, you could say that Black Knight and Forces both share a love of long, narrow hallways and, and big cinematic like segues between hallways. They're also both like the shortest games in the series. They're both very, very brief. Uh, yeah, like four hours, you would say, Jack, for four hours Black for Black Knight. Uh, mm-hmm. Forces is about five, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. three of them are on that final boss. <laughs> Second phase. I don't know yeah. what the problem with the final boss is. I beat it on the first try. Uh, and Forces? It's, it's the, mid- the middle and phase. Forces, that, yeah. That, that, the middle uh, phase is the tough. You got one. lucky. Yeah. There's something wonky with that boss. Um Okay, hey, okay. So you you went through all of all, all of Black Knight. Uh I know there's a, there's a couple twists and turns, maybe one of the more infamous ones which I think everyone gets warned about ahead of time is the fake out ending. Now I, I'm assuming you knew about that ahead of time. I knew about the fake out ending in advance. I've heard the stories. People are like, I beat the game where Sonic is like, yeah, I did it. And then the credits roll and it takes you back to the title screen. And they're like, the fuck was that? And they put the game down for a month. Yeah. Um, I, of course, knew this coming in. So I kept going. It's a fun twist. When I sit there and think about it, it's dumb. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it's... In the moment, you're like, oh, damn, Sonic's storytelling is back. I could didn't see that coming. And then when you get to uh, Merlina explaining why she did what she did, it's very stupid. It's just like, no, I saw a prophecy once that the King Arthur story is going to happen. Mm-hmm. What if we didn't let that happen because I don't like change? And... Then Sonic's like, no, nah, the world ending is okay. It's okay to be sad about that, though. And, like, basically ruins everything for everyone and fucks off to go be late for a date with Amy. <laughs> it sounds like they did save the cat to Sonic, though. They got the false ending. They got the the villain explaining the plot. Like, uh, did somebody read a script writing book? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I... Okay, I, I'm going to say this right now. I've never actually played the game. I have watched it. I have watched all the cutscenes. Uh, for years, I would go to Best Buy and see it sitting there, and it would say value 1999 and go, is today the day that I finally buy Black Knight? And it, it never came to be, but one day maybe I will finally play it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but like Merlin actually, like he's not anywhere in this game. Like he exists as a concept. Like, Merlina is the granddaughter of Merlin, right? Correct. Right. So I, I don't believe. Yeah, there's yeah, no so, real mention. Right. So for her to be like, oh, I'm afraid of change. I don't want things to end. I don't want the legend of King Arthur to reach its conclusion. Isn't she like not part of that legend? Like Merlin is the wizard. Merlina doesn't exist wouldn't she maybe exist after the end so what is she actually upset about when it comes to the king arthur there's like there's some dumb plot holes in this whole thing (laughs) the the game opens up with like sonic being sucked through a portal and he's got two chili dogs in hand and he's like yeah cool i understand what's happening here time for me to kill people so he kills a bunch of people and as you do defeats all the knights of the round table Mm -hmm. takes all their weapons defeats king arthur hands merlina his weapon and then merlina's like actually there was never a king arthur this was just for this so like what was the point everything has already happened that she didn't want to have happen yeah so where is king arthur i mean we do see the knights of the round table i mean they look like sonic characters um Oh, right. This is also like one of maybe two Sonic games like that doesn't have Eggman in it, right? He's nowhere to be found. There are some side missions where Eggman robots appear. 
Ah, uh, but not Eggman himself, not even in a in a King Arthur persona. Because he no. is in Secret Rings, right? He is the, yes. the king. Um Well, you know who's King Arthur. Oh yes, that's another twist or something. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Right. It, it connects to Sonic Underground is what you're saying. Yeah. The prophecy was foretold in, in this version. Uh, I don't know what happened to Sonya and Manic, but uh, <laughs> Sonic is destined to be. Do they? OK. OK. Before we go into Sonic Underground being <laughs> canon with uh-huh. Sonic and the Black Knight, uh, a couple of just quick points that I could see in playing the game and in watching Jack complete it. Uh, why people do like this game Uh, because it is pretty flashy. It looks pretty good. Uh, Like the graphics for Wii game look, you know, pretty it's, and it's a fun setting, I think. And Sonic with a sword is pretty badass. And the, the characterization has good beats to it. Sonic is definitely at his most himbo dumb dude. <laughs> Like there's one point during the ending climax where the evil queen, which I guess so that's Merlina, right? Uh, She's like, let me tell you about the depths of my grief so you understand my actions. And Sonic's just like, no, I don't want to. And then jumps into action. And then it's like the boss fight. And it's like, all right, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to. (laughs) Cue the rock song. Yeah, cue the rock song. Uh, It's a good rock song. It is a good, and then I, I guess this is, this is also the only time that Sonic and Amy canonically have a date scheduled, unless you count Sonic Adventure, because uh, cute couples get in free to Twinkle Park. I, I believe in the ending of Sonic Shuffle, Sonic and Amy are technically on a date. Or, or at least it's a date in Amy's mind. She's forcing Sonic to carry all of her shopping. Gotcha. Yeah, it's kind of the same here where it's like it's kind of just a date in Amy's mind where it's not necessarily that Sonic had confirmed that there was indeed a date. Well, I Uh, guess the difference, though, is that we see the two chili dogs in the beginning and he eats one very oddly. I'm going to say that right now. I've always thought it was odd him shoving his fingers in his mouth. Uncomfortable. But there's a second chili dog. He is not planning on eating that because I guess it's for Amy. That's the implication. And it gets lost and he's a bit sad. So I guess this is the first time he was like, oh, I'm going to give Amy a thing, even though it is just what he likes to eat. But it's still, you know, more than Sonic would generally give Amy. So it is a turning point in the relationship. There's a lot of symbolism in there, right? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to leave that there. (laughs) Listeners, if you have a, a really good analysis of the symbolism you should email us at sonic weekly podcast at gmail.com uh, and we can go uh, do a deep dive on that <laughs> if you tell us what the chili represents that's the real question <laughs> uh jack what do you think the chili represents <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay um all right, Sonic and the Black Knight. Bo has not played it. David has not played it. Grant has played it somewhat. Jack has played it to completion. <laughs> that, that, all right, so, so Jack in this instance is the expert of this particular Sonic game. Uh, how many villagers did you accidentally murder in the game? I lost count. But there are side quests <laughs> where you are specifically told to go trade with them. You collect rings, uh-huh. which are weird fairy things instead of actual rings. And then you have to slow down, walk up to them, press like the Z button on the nunchuck, and then okay. do a quick time event mini game to convince them you're not going to murder them. <laughs> <laughs> then you can give them 20 rings and they'll give you an item for crafting. So. Wow. I'm pro- the murder count, innumerable, indecipherable, unimaginable. The save count, about eight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it, I know it tallies it at the end. Like, do you get something if you save all them all? You it's get just like a graveyard, right? Like, isn't it just like <laughs> a long cutscene where, like, you you 
see flowers being yeah. laid at each grave and you you have to run by every grave uh yeah. and you each grave you walk past sonic's feet get a little heavier Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they do the credits. It's really dark. That's really That's weird. That's why they're longer than Colors Ultimate, I think. Um, yeah. Not as long as Superstars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who didn't they think in Superstars? They didn't thank me, and I feel like they should have. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so who's the you th- in, in Sonic 3 and mm-hmm. uh, Sonic and Knuckles? Right, they yeah. Bo. Me and Milpo. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> who's responsible for more deaths? Sonic and these villagers, um, or Knuckles during Operation <laughs> <Earthwave>. <laughs> Ooh. We're gonna ha- we're gonna have to go to the tape on this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's gonna be a replay review. We'll get back to you in a few minutes. <laughs> okay, yeah. it's a lot of a lot of counting there. All right, Knuckles characterization in Sonic <laughs> Forces is good. It's in character for him to think he would be a good leader and good strategist because he had guarded the master emerald unsuccessfully (laughs) during his tenure had multiple mistakes with it. So it stands to reason that he would confidently assert himself as, and and like kind of even be like a little excited that Sonic is off the board so he can show off and then fucks it all up (laughs) sends thousands to their death. Thousands. And it's just like, huh? Well, how about that? <laughs> That's why it's called war. <laughs> wow. Yeah, e- uh, easily duped is not uh, the greatest quality in a leader. But. Exactly. But it makes sense that he would uh, put himself in that situation to slip on that banana peel and uh, in that metaphor, you know, you know what? These fictional it's kind of missing from his characterization since 1994 is sort of that smirking. I'm going to pull the switch to change the weather in angel island and then i'm gonna pull it up again a bunch of times <laughs> just while i'm laughing at you yeah yeah he's definitely a little bit i think he had kind of some of that energy in frontiers a little bit mischievous um but definitely not you know to the degree in 1994 it's definitely a, a flavor of his character that i would like to see return more mm-hmm. yeah all right uh, Jack, which of the core three knights did you like the most, or or maybe uh, like the most character wise and like the most playstyle wise? If there's actually any difference between the three of them in Sonic, they actually all do play a little bit differently. And mm-hmm. playing each one of them is like, what if I played the game on hard mode in a different way? Sonic is just way better to play as. If you just want to get through the game, shadow moves a little slower. His special attacks are a little slower, but they look cooler because he's the coolest. All right. As, as established. I'm the coolest. <laughs> um, Knuckles uh, sucks at combat for some reason, <laughs> but fun. he can glide over all the enemies, which so you can just skip 90% of the levels. And uh, blaze just kind of sucks. Oh, it's, well it's just like, there's nothing special. She just sucks. <laughs> oh. Um, personality wise, they're all really one note. They're all just like, I think something's up with Arthur, but I'm a loyal knight, so I'm going to do the thing. They play up Blaze as the strongest, and she is the hardest boss fight, but it those boss fights boil down to, I'm going to lose a bunch of times, and then somewhere along the way, my waggle is just going to hit just right and i'm just going to like one shot the boss um (laughs) it's a struggle that's where i I left off in my playthrough is the blaze boss fight uh pretty tricky pretty 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 tricky she's tough yeah it's one uh, tough cookie the the characters it's it's frustrating in that they're so one note because it's all just so that Sonic can go in and be like, all right, you guys have had a lifetime of being knights. I've been doing this for one day, and I'm going to tell you all to fuckle up, Buttercup, and get your shit together. And <laughs> they do. Wow. That's it. <sighs> this I was guess- the <laughs> last uh, the last project for this cast of voice actors, right? 
That's my understanding. Yeah. Yeah, it was. So at the end, you know, that, that, you know, Jason version of Sonic is talking about uh, accepting that things end and, you know, enjoying the journey while it lasts. And that's his last recording. You can imagine some very sensitive teenager making a very overwrought AMV video (laughs) at the time. Again, this is a straw man. This is a hypothetical person. Right, but you, you, you know, you not can imagine me. it being a person. Not, yeah. it's not me. I'm not. Not you. To this. It's not. You don't have I'm a, not, a don't YouTube account. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, uh, there wasn't. There wasn't an installed Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> it just came with Windows just came, Millennium. It's so. like that's, I didn't make this AMV. I swear, <laughs> it came with the computer. Can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> um. I would, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So, of the two storybook games, which is the better one? Secret Rings. <laughs> yeah. Like, fair. I don't even have to think about that. <laughs> wow. It, I feel like there's this is the hot take. I think so, too. I kind of feel like it's Black Knight, even though I finished Secret Rings, liked Secret Rings at the time. Uh, Black Knight, it feels it better to control just because you aren't constantly moving. It's not an auto runner. It's think- not an it auto runner, runner, but they, there aren't precision controls. Once the game asks you to actually do precision platforming, yeah. it's, it's not there at all. And somehow <laughs> despite uh, secret rings, just being, I'm using tilt controls. Yeah. You can get precision platforming out of it. And that is, alone makes it a more playable game to me like black knight flashier prettier better story secret rings actually plays better and yeah. at the end of the day i'm sorry y'all but i'm not coming to sonic for a storyline i'm coming <laughs> to sonic to have fun <laughs> playing a great seven out of ten platformer yeah that's what yeah yeah well said i mean that is what we come here for uh, yeah. That Seven out of ten. Jungle. Can't simplify that. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> those, are, those are relatively prime. Those are, that's right. Because if you if you turn that ten into a five, what, what happens to those, the seven? It's uh, 3.5, and that's strange. You got decimals on top of your fraction. Your fifth grade math teacher would start yelling at you. But you know what they wouldn't yell at you about? <laughs> that's right. Listening. To another episode of Sonic Weekly, which is what you just did. You played it on the school speaker system, rolled out that CRT television and played it on a VCR. I don't know. What are we doing? What we're doing, of course, is uh, doing a little role play at the end, imagining what situation you existed in listening to this episode. And as we try to come up with a, a better version of that, what you should do if you haven't already is, of course, subscribe to this podcast using your podcatcher of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podcast Attic, the open source for, for an open heart. Uh, or, hey, if you don't want to use a podcatcher, maybe I don't blame you. We've got a YouTube channel. It's at Sonic-Weekly. you got to have the at and you got to have the dash or you're going somewhere else. And you can listen to the same thing, but with some amazing gameplay footage recorded by none other than Jack of All Games, our guest this week. Thank you for that and for this, for all of it. Thank you for being here. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, Jack. Um, if you want to get in touch with the show, I uh, mentioned it earlier, we have our uh, email account, sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. Throw us a line. We might read whatever it is you have to say. And if you want to get into our Discord server, hey, you got to email and ask for that exclusive link. And then you'll be able to talk with some like-minded Sonic the Hedgehog fans. And it's not all about Sonic in there. You know, there's some other wild times, but good times. Uh, man, I always forget if there was something else before I thank Smoothies for the edit. He's the one who makes sure that what we say actually sounds good on the other end. And we thank him for those pristine edits. Of course, I always thank Bo and Grant for being here with me. 
on this journey of Sonic the Hedgehog week after week, month after month. Maybe this week, I'll also thank Shadow the Hedgehog for teaching me how to be fearless. You're welcome, David. (laughs) 